Costin, how are you doing? Good. Good. We're just gonna give it one second, see if we got some other ones coming on, okay? Well, I don't know where our friends are, so should we get started? Yeah? Okay, we'll get started. Okay, welcome. It's good to have you. You're like my favorite 4-H buddy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So today we're going to make pizza. So the first thing we've got to do is you got to turn on your oven, okay? So go turn on your oven to 450 degrees. Already did. You did? Is it 450 or 350? 450. Look at you. You're all good. Okay. Then you need a pan to cook it on. Do you have a pan ready? So I'm going to use this sheet pan. Do you have something like that? You can use a round one. You can use a rectangle one. Okay, perfect. You got a stone. Those work even better. Okay. Okay, now we have that. We have to do, we have to start our yeast, okay? So what we do is we have to proof our yeast. So first thing is you need a container. I usually use a liquid measuring cup like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go get some warm water, okay? So I'm gonna take you with me. And what I do is I just turn on the water and let it run for a minute, okay? You don't need it too hot. You just need it kind of warmish, okay? So I just kind of keep my finger under there. And when it starts to get too hot to touch, so it feels like it's gonna burn me, or it's getting ready to, most, most um, houses don't have that hot of water. So once it gets kind of warm, okay, then we're going to put, I think it's a cup and a half of warm water in there. Okay, so I got my water in there. Now I'll show you something. See all these little lines on the side? They're kind of hard to tell where we're at. So I always put mine on a flat surface and then I look at it at eye level to see if it's the right and it looks like I've got a little too much so I'm going to pour some out then I'm going to check again yep that's just about right 
So let's go back over here. All right, it's really important that they water the warm temperature because that's what makes our yeast grow, okay? So now you need to get a tablespoon of sugar, just regular table sugar, okay? So this is what it looks like, okay? And then sprinkle that in your water, okay? All right, we good? Once you get it sprinkled in there, we have to put our yeast in there. I'm almost out of my yeast, so I'm gonna... Now you got a packet of yeast. It's a little bit less than this tablespoon, but it'll still be enough, okay? So you can open your packet of yeast and you just sprinkle that on top of the water. And you'll see it kind of, see how it floats? And then get a knife. I always use like a butter knife to stir my yeast because then it doesn't stick to the spoon. If you get a spoon, it'll stick to the spoon. Okay, then you wanna just gently stir that yeast. Try to like, it'll clump up on your knife a little bit. Try to break up the clumps a little. You can push them against the side of the Oh, you want to just kind of mix that up with the sugar. Okay, now it looks kind of funny, huh? It looks like it has floaties in it. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're just going to set it aside and you'll be amazed what happens, okay? So just put it aside. And we're gonna let the yeast grow for a minute, okay? So yeast is actually alive. Did you know that? It's a living organism. So when you put it in water and you give it sugar, which is food, then it starts to grow and it will start to like double in size. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's get started on our dough because that's the biggest part of the pizza, right? We gotta have a crust. Okay, good, okay. We got the bowl. Now we're gonna start with we're just gonna start with three and a half cups of flour, okay? Because we may not need all our flour. So get you a measuring cup. This is a cup measure. And I'm gonna, there's one. There's two. Three, and a little bit, three and a half. Okay, you good? All right, now grab some salt. Salt, you can use a salt shaker, you can use this. And we need a half a teaspoon or you can do what I do. And I'm gonna show you, I always just estimate salt. So you always wanna hold it over the bowl and that's about half a teaspoon. But you can use a half a teaspoon if you're worried about it. Okay, then grab a whisk or a fork and we're just gonna whisk that salt into the flour. Okay. 
just want to get the salt kind of mixed in there. You know, salt gives yeast dough flavor, but did you also know that salt slows down yeast? So then it doesn't get too yeasty, okay? Looks like we've got Courtney coming on. Hello, is that Courtney? Oh, she's trying to connect. Okay, so we are just finishing up getting our flour in. Courtney, if you're, you just joined us, you need to get your water going really quick and a tablespoon of sugar. It's, it's up, actually me, April. I was checking to see if they got on because I texted to remind them. So I will call and let them know they're late. Yeah, sorry, Hindi, they weren't here. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so, okay, Costin, we've got the flour in there and the salt. Now, I like to make like a little kind of a well in the middle of it. You can use a spoon or a, a spatula or something. Okay, now, show me your yeast. Can you show it to me? Or does it look kind of like this? Do you see how it's all bubbly? It looks like that? Okay, good. Then it's ready to go. If it doesn't bubble, then it means your yeast isn't good. But if it's bubbling, it's good. Okay, so pour your yeast in the middle of that well that you made in your flour. Okay. And then just carefully stir the flour. You wanna to try to get the flour all wet. See how it'll start to come into like a ball like this? It's still kind of wet, but it's starting to hold together, right? Okay, that's what you want it to look like. And once you get it to like, it still kind of holds together, just clean off your spoon, put it back on there. Okay. Hey, is it holding together? Starting to get a ball? Okay. Okay. Now, once it does that, whoa, I just moved my thing. Okay, once it does that, kind of clean off the spatula and just put it on the dough. And then I want you to take some flour and get a countertop space. Okay, see like this, somewhere flat. You're gonna dust it with flour. See how I'm doing that? Yeah, he's all excited. I can't wait to make a mess. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna put that on the counter like that. See how we have enough so it won't stick? And then I have this nifty little scraper thing, but you can use a spatula, a rubber spatula. And you're gonna pour the dough onto that flour. Just like that. Okay. Now this is gonna be pretty sticky. So I always take a little bit of flour and dust it on top too. I'm getting a good mess going. And believe it or not, this won't be very messy when we're done because we're gonna knead all that flour into the dough. Okay, now I want to show you first. So sprinkle some flour on top of it. You can get some on your hands. Okay. 
See how my hands have flour on them? All right, now there's a trick to kneading. You wanna push it down and then fold it in, push it, fold it, push it, fold it. Okay, so we're just pulling it back in on itself. And then if it gets too sticky, add more flour, okay? You really wanna kind of push it out there. So use your body straight, yep, good. It's kind of like it's rolling across the counter. And it'll start picking up the flour. See how it's cleaning the counter? It's kind of cool, huh? It doesn't keep it messy. Okay, keep kneading. Probably gonna need some more flour. So when we're done, we don't want it to be too sticky. Now see how I'm keeping it? Good job. See how I'm keeping it in a ball? Okay, keep going. It takes a while. Push it and then pull it back in. So we're making a cute little ball, okay? Push it, fold it, push it, fold it, push it, okay? And people tend to knead their own way as long as you're pulling it up from the bottom and folding it in and pushing it out again, okay? My grandma used to have her own way to knead. It was very interesting. My mom needs different than I do. So you really want to push your body strength into that. Come on, Costin, show me your muscles. <laughs> okay, we're getting closer. What we're doing with this is we're making a molecule in the flour get really long and stretchy. It's called gluten. And that's what gives us the ability to stretch the dough and make a really good pizza crust. But you have to work gluten. It doesn't form all on, on its own. Okay, how's it feeling? Is it getting less sticky? Okay, keep adding some flour if you need to. Believe it or not, we gotta keep going for just a little bit longer. You're gonna keep doing it until it doesn't feel very wet anymore, okay? And like all this stuff on your hands will start coming off into the dough. Okay, is yours starting to look like that? See how smooth it is? There's not a lot of lumps in it. I still think mine's a little too wet, so we're gonna do a little bit longer. Okay, we're about there. What are you thinking, Costa? Your arms getting tired? No? Okay, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> okay, now, my grandma used to always tell me that when you're done kneading dough, it would feel like a baby's bottom. <laughs> Have you ever felt a baby's bottom before? Yeah, but it's nice and smooth and soft. Okay. Okay, when it's there, or you think you're about there or you need to need it some more? You can keep going. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you pick it up and get a little flour on your hands. And then you're gonna like tuck the bottom into the middle. See how I'm kind of just tucking it in? And it makes my Makes my top really kind of smooth. This will help it so that it can um, rise a little bit. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit more on this. Okay. Now, when you get it to this point, you just want to put a little flour over here and let it sit there. Okay, you don't need to cover it because we're, we're not gonna be sitting it for very long. 
Okay, so once you get there, then we're gonna clean up our counter, okay? So I'm just gonna put myself on mute for a minute and clean up my counter. Okay, I was gonna show you a trick too. Uh, if I can find it. Okay, so I have this little tool. It's a metal scraper and it works really well when you're trying to clean up dough off the counter. So you just take it and you scrape it. See that? See how it's picking up all that flour? It's a really fast way. Cause if you try to take a rag to it, it's gonna just get all gummy, right? So I just scrape it off the counter get as much as I can off. Woo, sorry, that was left. And then throw this in the garbage. Hey, your dough looks good. Yeah, was that fun kneading? Pretty cool, huh? Sometimes when I'm mad, I like to need things because then it gets out my anger. I'm just gonna take a minute and clean up. Well, clean up a few things. Okay, I know sometimes it gets frustrating when we have to clean up, but it helps when you're done. It's not such a big mess. All right, now we're gonna get our toppings together because our dough needs to sit for like 10 minutes before we can roll it out, okay? So now let's get our toppings together. Um, I have decided for my pizza that I'm gonna have pepperoni yeah, you have pepperoni too. And then I want some spaghetti sauce and or some, I use spaghetti sauce, but pizza sauce, right? And you got pizza sauce. And then I like olives. Do you like olives? Yeah? Okay. So one thing that helps when you're doing pizza is if you will slice your olives so that they're not so big. When we put whole olives on a pizza, that has a hard time cooking it all the way. So I'm gonna slice some olives. Are yours already sliced, Costin? Yeah, <laughs> your mom was smart and got sliced olives. Okay, so I'm gonna slice a few of those. What else are you gonna put on your pizza, Costin? Ooh, Canadian bacon, that was a good idea. Anything else? Onion. Yep, that's a really good one. My girls don't really like onion, so I rarely put onion on there. But my husband likes it. He would like that pizza. What about cheese? Do you have cheese? Is a pizza a pizza without cheese? No, <laughs> I agree. Do you know, I've had pizza without sauce before, but it had cheese on it. It was really good. It didn't have any sauce. It just had 
like lemon juice, olive oil, and salt, and cheese, and basil. It was really good. But yeah, it didn't have sauce on it. So not every pizza has sauce. Some pizzas use ranch dressing. Have you ever seen that one? They have ranch and chicken and bacon. That's another really good one. Or barbecue sauce. Have you ever had a barbecue sauce pizza? No? Don't forget to go. Sorry, I had to tell my daughter something. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, now you need to get your pan ready. Here you go, don't forget that. You can do two things. So a traditional pizza would have, um, they use this cornmeal, okay? Because it makes it so that the pizza can like spread, the dough can kind of rise, but it doesn't stick. So I just use a little bit of cornmeal on mine. But you can also just use cooking spray, okay? If you just have cooking spray, you can use that. Okay, so my pan's ready. Okay, now you can take your dough up. Does it feel kind of like it's risen a little bit? It's kind of soft, like a cloud. Now you have to decide how many pizzas do you want to make? Now you can make, if I do two, then it's a pretty good size pizza, right? Or you can make three if you want to make smaller ones, okay? So you can just, the cool thing about dough is if you take it in your hand like this and you pinch it, it cuts it. Is that cool? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna show you again. You put it up there, hold your fingers like this, okay? And you put the dough in there and squeeze. And guess what happens? It's pretty easy, huh? So that would make four really, these would be like individual sized pizzas. I also wanna tell you another trick. So this is some dough that, oh, I need to grab my flour, hang on. So this is some dough that I made yesterday. And I put it in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator. And notice how it gets all bubbly and there's lots of holes in it. This actually makes a really good pizza dough. I can get this one a lot smaller, like thinner than I can a fresh pizza dough. But you can still do pretty good with a fresh pizza dough. But I'm gonna use this one to show you how to roll it out because I'll be able to stretch it pretty thin, okay? So you can see if you can plan ahead and make your pizza dough the day before, or even a few hours before, it'll be really good, okay? Okay, so you're gonna need a little bit of flour on your top. I'm gonna make a, a decent sized pizza. Now, if we want a round pizza, we want it to start in a round ball like that, okay? And yours is round, right, Austin? So we're gonna do yours in a round. So get it kind of round, sprinkle some flour on top of it, and then you need a rolling pin, okay? The trick with the rolling pin is that you need to take the flour and rub it on your rolling pin, kind of like that just so it's dusted, then it's a little bit easier. It won't stick to the dough, okay? So then we're just gonna roll it in a circle. So you're gonna roll it like while you alternate, going around. This makes it stay circly. <laughs> circly, is that even a word? <laughs> okay, pull it towards you, then go out on the side. Okay, that's gonna, you're, you're gonna have a basic circle shape. Now, if you can hear, I'm gonna be quiet while I do this one, see if you can hear it. Did you hear that? That was all of the bubbles popping in my dough, which is good, we want that to happen. Okay, so we're still pretty good circle, huh, Costa? 
Now I'm gonna show you something. If you really wanna stretch this dough out, you pick it up, okay? Get a little bit of flour on your hands. And then you're gonna make your hands go like this. So you see your knuckles. Don't use your fingertips because your nails will cut the dough. Use your knuckles. And you're gonna take your knuckles and you're gonna pull out on the dough. Okay, like this. See how it's stretching it? Yeah. So we're stretching the dough. Don't use your fingernails though, because it'll cut them. Notice how big it's getting now. Look how much bigger it is than when I started. Pretty good, huh? Okay, so let's do it again. We're gonna keep stretching it. The key to a really good pizza is a pretty thin dough because then the yeast can rise pretty good. Now you can turn it in a circle motion like this, pulling your knuckles out and it'll keep it pretty circled in a circle. Okay, notice like that. Okay, now watch this. If your mom lets you, you'll have to ask her though. You can also throw it in the air and that will keep it, it will get it even more thin. Okay, so pull and throw. Okay, and if you have a good dough, it won't stick together and you'll be able to get it pretty thin. Okay, Woo, that one didn't work so hot. Sometimes I don't do so good with the pulling and throwing. So I go back to the, okay, I got a couple holes in mine. Okay, you getting good and thin? You can even hold it like this and it will just, the gravity will pull the weight down. Okay. I'm gonna heal a couple holes. You get a cup, if you get a hole in it, no big deal. Just fold it over. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, I'm almost ready on mine. Now, sometimes the edges are thicker. So I like to just take a rolling pin and kind of smooth out those edges, okay? And I'm gonna take up my pizza, get it on my pan. And I have a oblong pan, so I'm gonna to have to stretch mine out a little. So one thing about good gluten, if you have good gluten formation, it'll see, watch how you pull it and it'll go back together. See that? And pull it clear out here and then it kind of retracts. So sometimes you have to hold it to get it to do what you want. Okay. And pizza doesn't have to be pretty, just has to taste good, huh? Okay. All right. Dough's all ready. Are you ready? No? <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna scrape whew, the flour off real quick and then we'll put toppings on it. Now you're good? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's get the toppings on it. Now, first thing first, we need to put the sauce on it, okay? So get your sauce and a spoon. Now I use spaghetti sauce just cause I bottle my own, but then we're gonna add a seasoning to it that will make it taste more like pizza. So you can choose if you want more than that. And you've got to decide how much sauce you want, okay? You can do a lot, you can do a little. Most pizzas don't have a ton. So I start kind of like that, put like a few dots on it and then spread it out. Okay, doesn't have to look very pretty. Just cover most of it with sauce. If you see some spots that are kind of naked, <laughs> you can fill them in. Okay, 
then you get to decide if you want to or not. Okay, I use this, it's Italian seasoning. Um, we use this for our crescent roll recipe if you did that. And you just sprinkle that on top of your pizza dough. Just like this. Okay, if you don't want that, you don't have to put it on there. And if you're using pizza sauce, it already kind of tastes like that anyway. Okay, then I have Parmesan cheese. I don't know if you guys have any Parmesan cheese. I think I'm getting ahead of you, huh, Costa? You're still spreading your sauce. All right, so if you want to, you can sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top of your sauce. I just think it gives it a good flavor. You can use the grated kind or you can use this more powdery kind. Okay, to that. And then I like to put a base of cheese over mine because it helps keep the toppings in place. So I'm gonna use some mozzarella that's already shredded. And just sprinkle it all over that flatbread. You don't want to cover it like really thick because remember it's going to melt, right? So that's pretty good. You'll still see sauce, but you want it covered, not completely covered. All right, you got that. And now grab your other toppings, All right? I'm gonna do pepperoni. You had pepperoni and ham. So you can start layering those on top of the cheese. Open. I gotta figure out how to open it. Okay. You getting, oh, you're trying to get yours open too. It's hard when your fingers are greasy, huh? Can't get it open. <laughs> And I like lots of pepperoni, so. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some sliced olives on mine. We got whole ones mixed in with the slice. Looks like I'm gonna have to slice a few more. It just depends on how many olives you want. I like a lot. You know, you can use the green olives too. That's really good. That's kind of a briny flavor to it. A lot of kids don't like the green ones though, so. It's like a dad like flavor. Ones. You what? I like the green ones. You do? Oh, yep. You're getting old enough to be, getting closer to being a dad, huh? So I guess that makes you. <laughs> Some kids like those. Calm down, they're kind of strong. Okay. Now that's all I'm gonna put on my pizza. So you're gonna put your onions. I'm going to finish mine with a mixed cheese. So this one has provolone and cheddar. Just kind of gives it a little more color. So I'm going to use that one. 
Put a little more cheese on top. You can use the same cheese you had. Okay, voila. It's ready for the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Okay, now our oven is super hot, so be really careful when you put your pizza in there, okay? Let's see it. Oh, it's beautiful. Good job. Okay, be really careful when you put it in the oven, okay? I don't want you to burn yourself. And then we got to keep an eye on it because our oven's super hot, so it's going to cook pretty fast. I'm gonna put a few things away while we're letting it cook. Now you should probably still have some dough left, right? You used all your dough? Okay, good. I had extra, but I was gonna tell you this. So if you make a big batch of pizza dough and you don't need all of it, just take a Ziploc bag like this, okay? And take some cooking spray and spray the inside of the bag. Okay? And then you put this dough in there and you can either leave it in the fridge overnight or you can put it in the freezer and it will stay good in the freezer for like a month. Then if you just decide you wanna make pizza, you can get it out of the fridge for a couple hours before, and guess what? You're all set to go, okay? All right, so did you get your space all cleaned up, Costin? Putting everything away. Always want to make sure we clean up after we. Then your moms are happier to let you cook and you're being responsible and doing your part. <laughs> All right, so, okay, Costa, you're gonna have to tell me a couple of things because you're the only one on. And it's kind of funny because we had 11 kids signed up, so I don't know where everybody else is. <laughs> Probably busy, right? We're getting towards the end of winter. It's busy, busy. Okay. So this, when we make pizza, we're putting toppings on a flatbread. And that's a very traditional bread for people in like Italy, Greece, Spain. So what do you think some other things you could put on the flatbread? Cinnamon and apples. So smart. Yeah, you could chunk up some apples, maybe put it in some melted butter and some cinnamon. That would be so good. And then you could drizzle ice cream on, or like icing on top, right? Yeah. You could also make breadsticks out of it, right? You could just do butter and garlic salt and maybe a little Italian seasoning. Any other ideas? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so flatbread is a really easy way to cook and um, get a meal really fast. Okay, also though, did you know that the kneading I showed you, that's exactly what you would do if you were making bread too. Did you know that? Yeah, it's true. So you can do the same thing and make rolls, bread. You just have to let it raise before you bake it, okay? 
All right. So do you want me to, let's see. Time your oven for, well, watch your oven. If your mom, I saw your mom put in two pizzas. So in about five minutes, switch it, okay? Put the bottom pizza on the top and the top pizza on the bottom. And you will know your pizza is done when it's all bubbly and brown, it gets light brown on the edges, okay? All right, any questions you wanna ask me? Nothing? Did you have fun? Okay, good. Do you have any ideas for a future green apron? Something you would like to learn? There's something you want to learn how to cook? Apple pie. Oh, you know what? That's not a bad idea. We could totally do. You must like apples, huh? Yeah. So tell me, before we sign off, tell me one thing you learned today. That making pizza was fun. <laughs> and it's pretty easy, right? It's not hard. I know people think it's so hard. It's not hard. Okay, well, thanks for being here, Costin. I hope your pizza is super yummy. Don't eat it all yourself, okay? Can you share? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm hoping we'll have one next month. We're going to see, but hope you'll be on for that. Okay. All right. We'll see you. Have a good night. Thanks for teaching me. You're welcome. Bye, Costin.